Hi guys. I mean, I know it's been a while. Um, a lot has happened since I made my last video, but Spirit just woke me up at 3 in the morning, and I just, instead of writing it down, I thought I'd just make a video. Okay. Um, so, who <laughs> is <laughs> the benevolent covert narcissist? Who's that? I'm going to tell you, that is most likely a friend, okay? Most likely not a romantic partner, all right? But after you get rid of, like, the overt narcissist in your life, right? Then you think, like, oh, okay, good, I'm safe. I'm safe. I got my support system. And and then you find out oh, there's there's more narcissists. Okay, so that's what, actually, that's what I've been doing for the past, I don't know, four months that I've been offline. Okay, this is like the next level. I've been, I've been encountering covert narcissists. And it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, pretty cool. You know, that's, but like, <laughs> from a bird's eye perspective, it's like, it's like, oh, neat. Like, more lessons, whatever. Anyways, so... The benevolent covert narcissist, okay, is someone, someone who sees you and recognizes that you are someone who carries light, okay, you're, you're attractive, you're smart, you have a lot of untapped potential, okay, but they see that you shine, but they also see that <clears throat> all the hard work has been done, okay, somebody's already groomed you molded you into the perfect, um, the perfect supply, okay? Like, you're the perfect, like, source for energy. All they have to do is stand next to you and, like, plug in. And you, you are already someone who's been groomed to give your power away, okay? You already dim your own light. They don't have to do anything. All, literally, all they have to do is stand next to you and harvest your energy. All they have to do is stand next to you and <laughs> they're already better than someone. Okay, They already look like um, <laughs> prettier, smarter, more confident than you. Okay, so they don't have you do. You already do the hard work for them. So they just slide in there and it doesn't look like they're being abusive. Like, because technically technically they're not right okay so you are already conditioned to be supply and they are already established as someone who takes supply so you fit you, you already fit together like a hand in glove okay so they can they can you know they're probably like a charitable narcissist too right they do things to make themselves look good. Like they care about what other people think. Um, they they just want to appear like charitable. Like, oh, I rescued this bird. I'm such a good person. Or I, <laughs> you know, I rescued you. Like, and, and my covert narcissist rescued me many times. Many times, okay? Um, at the time, our relationship wasn't toxic because I was, like I said, I was already someone who dimmed my own light. I gave this person my power. I said, here, here you go. Here's my power. I don't, I don't know what to do with my power. I don't know what to do with how smart I am or how pretty I am, but here, I'm going to give it to you, give you my energy and you go ahead and be the smart and pretty one. Okay. So that's what I did with this person my whole life. Basically we met in high school. So when I started elevating and when I became, started gaining confidence, realized my own light and started refusing to dim it, she, she started going all haywire. Okay. This person started like losing her shit. And so, <laughs> okay. So after, <laughs> after you start healing, right, all these, these covert narcs who, you didn't know we're narcs, right? Because they're probably the people who, who helped you, who saved you, who were like, oh, Kristen, we just want you to get on your feet, right? And because it makes them look 
looks so good. Like, they're such good citizens, which, I'm not going to lie, okay? They do love you. They probably love you in their own way. Um, but after you're healed, they don't fit into your life anymore because they need you, even though they're helping you, right? Because, of course, they love you and they don't want you to die at the hands of an overt narcissist, right? So I, I have mixed feelings about these people, but I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to lie about what happened. I... We went through the part where they saved me. This person, this particular person, I paid her back, like, in money, okay? I gave her lots of money, and I don't feel bad about, like, having to step away from her when she started impeding my growth, okay? But, damn fucking ADHD, I just lost my train of thought. Um... Anyway, the covert, benevolent, covert narcissist, right? They seem kind. They seem like they care about you so much. And maybe they do, okay? Human beings are complex. All I know, though, is once I started being healed, once I started being confident, once I started to know what direction I wanted to ch take my life in, once I started to not be the supply that they once knew, um, it started to be a problem, okay? Um, I, I would come out, I would come out the gate all like confident and, you know, and they start looking at you like, what the f are you doing? <laughs> Why are you being confident now? Why are you not letting me tell you what to do? Why are you not letting me control you? Because, okay, narcissists think covert narcissists and overt narcissists have in common is that they need to control everything. Okay, they need to control their environment. Um, they need conditions, all external conditions to be just right to, to, make, to, to make them comfortable, okay? So they need to know that you're still, you're still staying down here, okay? Because... They need to be up here, okay. And if if you're if you're moving your goalpost up, you're forcing them to also like up their game. And why why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> why would anybody want to evolve and become better when <laughs> everything was fine, right? I, they were the narcissists were <laughs> they were behind the facade. They're pretending to be perfect, right? And you're someone who never called them out on that sh before. And now you're you're messing everything up, right? And they're like, no, go. They want you to go back under the, under the rock that you've been living under, right? They, they, they were the ones bringing you food, bringing you support. And they were looking like, oh, I'm such a good person. I'm taking care of this person, right? Oh, what, you, you can take care of yourself now? That's not cool. You, you need this from me, right? You need, okay, and so <laughs> they'll, they'll try to make you codependent on them, right? Not, not in the abusive way that the overt narcissist did, not, not dependent on them for emotional, romantic love, right? And validation, but, but no, they'll still, they'll still try to make you dependent on them for their validation. Like with this person, I found myself, like, I always had to justify to her um, my choices and my actions. And mind you, she wasn't even my mother, okay? She wasn't even my mom. Like, who made you, who made you the boss of me? Since when does your opinion matter, right? And I guess, you know, I always thought her opinion did matter, you know? Um, I always, like, thought she was smarter than me or knew more of what was going on. And once I stopped needing so much of her help, she's like, oh, well, did you, did you take care of this? Did you look out for this? Okay, so that's another thing. They're like always fear mongering you, like trying to make you worry about stuff that you don't need to be worried about. And we're like, maybe you do, but like, who, who the, who cares? Who cares? Worry about your own sh okay? Stop. People who externalize, okay, externalize like, their fears and, like, 
or their control, like they try to fix other people, really should be focused on fixing their own problems. Okay? Like, that's some kind of trauma response. Anyways. But yeah, after you get rid of the overt narcissist in your life, you're going to find out that, and this is really disappointing, okay? I'm not, <sighs> obviously, I'm still upset about it, but I don't care because I know what I'm saying is the truth, and I, I stand 10 toes down on anything I'm saying, okay? It's not going to change. This is the truth. Um, you're going to find out that <sighs> the people that who've been helping you, the people you've been connecting with all your life um, from a state of disempowerment, okay? So these are going to be people who are very close to you. It's going to be your family. It's going to be your best friends, okay? The reason you connected with them for so long and were so close with them and were like so good friends is because it was a symbiotic relationship between you and them, okay, you got support from them, they got narc supply from you, and it didn't seem, it wasn't abusive at the time, because they didn't have to beat you into submission to be their supply, you already existed as a source of supply, so like I said before, it you fit together like a hand in glove, okay, um, and it, it seemed like Oh, we we click. We get along so well. The chemistry is so great. We fit together, right? There, there. So it wasn't, you know, wasn't technically abusive. All right, you guys just fit, and it seemed to flow. So, but that's why you're in your disempowered state. So when you become, you step into your power, and um, you start to change and elevate you're taking away their source of supply. So then you're going to start smoking all the all the narcs out. You're going to find out like, whoa, this has been a toxic dynamic, right? I've been giving you my power this whole time. And now that I'm taking it back, it's a problem. Um, And so it's disappointing. It's disappointing to say the least. Um, But... What I would recommend, okay, and I'm not a psychologist. I'm just someone who's experienced this. So this is just, you know, make your own decision on this too. Okay, anyone who forces their their opinion on you is a fucking narc. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, I'm not a psychologist, but that's what I say. Um, because you got some kind of problem if if you have a problem if people don't take your advice or people don't people don't like. You know, let you control them. Like, dude. I mean, I could get into it, but um, I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, it's disappointing. But in my experience, my life gets better and better the more I smoke these mother out. Okay? When I when I drop the dead weight of, a, of another, like, narc I've discovered in my life, my life goes like this. I become like way more powerful. My manifestations come in like that. Okay? And not to mention like spiritual gifts. You know, like I'm I'm like <laughs> I'm one with the divine right now, okay? I not even gonna lie. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about spirituality later, but um yeah. Get rid of the covert I mean if they if they choose to take it upon themselves to elevate after okay you know i gave i gave all the narcs in my life a fair warning i said look i peep you doing this shit okay i see you doing that they all do this they all do the gaslighting thing they're like no nah, i'm not doing that i'm not doing that no you're tripping oh yeah i'm tripping okay bye bye <laughs> um if they take it upon themselves to heal themselves, okay, and come back, come back to me as an empowered person in their own right, okay, not trying to take my power away from me, um, 
then we can be friends again. But honestly, like, I would not trust this particular one again because, like, you can't trust envious friends, okay? You just can't. An envious friend is worse than an enemy. They're trying to undermine you at every turn. And, okay, it's insidious. Insidious. I said it. Um, but yeah, so. Watch out for the covert narcissist in your life. I say get rid of them, but, you know, do what you gotta do to elevate, okay? Alright, I love you guys. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!